This month I have a brand new whole house speech setup to show you. It's a multi-speaker system that allows the home automation computer to speak to any or all rooms in the house. I'll start with a demo where the house will chatter on and I'll walk through the house and I'll show you each of the speakers in action. Alexa, ask house to run speech test four. The speech here isn't very interesting, but you'll we'll be able to see consistent speaker action. Here's the Mississippi. Mississippi. Five Mississippi. Six Mississippi. Oh, seven you Mississippi. Have to know. The office. Nine Mississippi. Ten Mississippi. Speaker two. Eleven Mississippi. Twelve Mississippi. Thirteen Mississippi. I'm done Fourteen with the bedroom. Fifteen Mississippi. Sixteen Mississippi. Seventeen Mississippi. Eighteen Mississippi. Mississippi, 25 Mississippi, 30 Mississippi, 31 Mississippi, 32 Mississippi, 33. Hiding under there. 42 Mississippi, 43 Mississippi. We're not done yet. We have the treehouse to go. Bear with me. Way up there. Up we go. 56 Mississippi, 57 oh, Mississippi, 58 yeah. Mississippi, 59 Mississippi, 60 Mississippi. Oh, that's a lot of Mississippis. <laughs> Bear with me. I gotta catch my, catch my breath. I'll be right back. So about a year ago, I showed a different multi-room home automation speech setup that used Raspberry Pis and inexpensive USB speakers. So for about $50 a room, you could set up something like this. Uh, I liked the solution a lot because we could multi-purpose these pies to do other things like use these inexpensive temperature and humidity sensors to measure temperature and humidity or hook it up to an inexpensive monitor and uh, do a photo slideshow. That used the popular Internet of Things protocol MQTT and it worked pretty well. Usually the speech between rooms was pretty synchronous. Uh, but occasionally, due to discrepancies in Wi-Fi latencies, inconsistencies in the Wi-Fi latencies and the Raspberry Pi swapping things in and out, we could get uh, some echoes between the rooms, or even worse, uh, speech differences of a half a second or a second and a half. The engineers at Google figured out how to do solid multi-room speaker synchronization using Chromecast devices. So for about the same price as the previous setup with uh, pies, you can buy yourself a $35 Chromecast and a 20-ish dollar speaker with a line in and put one of these in every room of your house for about $50 or $60. Or if you feel like splurging, you can spend $130 and buy a Google Home, which has a really nice speaker built in, allows you to listen, and more importantly, you can talk to your house. Like, uh, hey Google, ask house what are the temperatures? And okay. That will trigger IFTT recipe, which will query the house. Up 72, down 67, out 76. So the trick to making this effective is managing latency. The, the time from when the house initiates speech to when you first hear it over the speaker. If you were to create a new Chromecast stream every time the house wanted to say something, that's problematic. So that takes like over five seconds to coordinate all those speakers and to start the stream buffer. Instead, we use a program called MK Chromecast, open source Python program, and it just runs all the time on my Linux box and creates a virtual sound card. So when the house goes to speak something, you can pick to send it over to the local speaker or send it over to the Chromecast speakers. As a demo, I set up to this button here. Um, it'll send a speech out to both sets of speakers at the same time, and you can hear that latency difference. Hello, Bruce. I love my new voice box. Hello, Bruce. I love my new voice box. That's about as worse as it'll get, two to three seconds. Uh, interestingly, the longer that um, Chromecast buffer lasts, the shorter that latency will be. It can be as good as half a second. So one of the cool features of this setup is if your house is speaking to the Google Home speaker, you can still interact with it. Uh, for example, hey, Google. Ask House to read a deep thought. So okay. This is speaking this random funny quote. I can ask it a question. Even though I was their captive, hey, the Indians allowed me quite a bit of freedom. 
What is the temperature? I can walk about freely, make my own deals. The current temperature in Vestavia Hills is 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Discovered they were not Indians at all, but dirty clothes hampers. So another feature that we can enable is specific room speech. So we can target one room or set of rooms by muting or unmuting all the other speakers. Um, we, to do that, we use a program, another open source Python program called Monitor CC. It uses that MQTT protocol to send and receive data from the Chromecast. So um, I'm going to demo a command here where we uh, target individual rooms by muting all the other rooms and letting that one room speak. Alexa, ask House to run speech test one. So first, it'll speak to all rooms. Hi there, room all. And then it'll speak to the office by itself. Hi there, room office. It goes down to oh, this room, bedroom. Hi there, room, bedroom. Down to the guest room. Hi there, room, guest room. Down to the downstairs room. Hi there, room, downstairs. 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 Hi there, and that is you can't use the speakers you're using for your home uh, automation speech as music streamers. If you did, that'll interrupt the MK Chromecast stream and uh, you, you won't hear anything. Now I get around the problem of accidentally doing that by having a daemon running in the background that automatically makes sure that MK Chromecast is running. So if I were to accidentally start music like this, hey Google, ask, uh, play some Johnny Cash. It will, within sure, a minute or so, stop that music and restart the MK Chromecast stream. Now, if you have uh, other speakers, like a Sonos setup, or a different set of Chromecast speakers, uh, that's not a big problem. You just use those to stream music. You don't notice the problem. And there you can see the house is back to listening again. We can Play Hello, Bruce. Test. I love my new voice box. Hello, Bruce. You can see that I love my back new in action. voice box. You actually can play music over the same home automation speaker system. You just can't do it natively with the Google Play commands. Instead, if you play music on your home automation server, it'll use that same virtual sound card uh, and to play the music. For example, here I have a VNC session to my Linux box, and if I play music there, We'll see the music come out here. And we still get the speech through there. So like, Alexa, ask House where is Helen? It'll still do the speech synthesis through the same speakers. Helen is at Webb Hospital. One other tip if you want to give this setup a try. Uh, these Chromecast devices, they won't drive a USB speaker or a Bluetooth speaker. You have to have a speaker with a line in jack. When you're dealing with lying in, it's pretty easy to get something called ground loop noise. Uh, from the buzz and crackle due to the power supply noise. To avoid that, the easiest solution is to use a different power supply for the Chromecast and the speaker. So here you see this is driven by the Chromecast, is driven by this, and the speaker is driven by that. You can also use um, something called a lying in filter, a little $10 device, but and that it helps, but it's not as effective as this. Yeah, with this I get zero noise. So you're going to close out with one final note. In order for this setup to work well, you got to have a good, solid, ubiquitous Wi-Fi network. Uh, last year I did a different video on the Eero mesh networking system, and I'm really happy with that. It's uh, pretty reliable, good coverage. But for a variety of reasons, I decided recently to try the Google Wi-Fi mesh network. And for the purposes of the Chrome, Chrome, Chromecast streaming, um, it seems to work better. Maybe not a surprise given it's the same company. Uh, with the Euro, I would sometimes get uh, the speech would break up a little and I'd have latencies of three seconds, maybe four. Um, with the Google Wi Fi, I hardly ever get any uh, stuttering and latencies are off in less than a second. Now there are other advantages and disadvantages to the Eero versus the Google um, Wi-Fi mesh network, mesh Wi-Fi systems, and 
but um, let's save that for another video, maybe next month. That's it for this month. Hopefully we'll see you next month.